Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail Self, and we are doing a new series today, a viewer's choice series. You all voted overwhelmingly for Lords of the Realm 1, so that's what we're going to play today. And it is a good, fun, turn-based strategy game from the early 90s. It has some concepts that are ahead of its time, so I'm going to start a new conquest here. We're going to be doing hard-level economy and hard-level warfare. There are things that are a step above, but I'm not going to do those because that relies way too much on chance of getting you to victory or even to break even. So hard gives you a little bit of a better chance to try and work. Now I am going to select only one human player. I do have some fond memories back in the day of having six people sitting in front of a computer just playing this game. It's was it's kind of like the hot seat multiplayer that you think of except a, literally just one person at the computer at a time turn to turn. So my name is going to be way to fail self for this. I mean that's a little bit I guess you could say breaking in the spirit as you'll see in a minute, but we're going to be green for this. And you have five nobles that you face off against. The Baron in blue, the Bishop in purple, the Earl in white, the Countess in black, and the Knight in red. And we'll talk about those different people momentarily. Let's see where we are on the map. We are in Suffolk. You can see our opponent to the south in Sussex is the Earl in their high sex, middle sex, Essex. I laughed at that as a teenager too. It's okay, get it out of your system now. The Countess in Gloucestershire, uh, the Bishop down in Cornwall, the Baron in, I still don't do too great with my Welsh pronunciation, I believe that's pronounced Gwynedd, and then there's Yorkshire where the Knight is located. So I'm pincered between two opponents that are kind of tough. I'll go ahead and give you, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Civilization V or any of the Civilization games, your different opponents have different tendencies. The Earl in white, he is a very strong player, bounced economy, builds castles to defend himself, probably the toughest opponent to take out, and I'll probably be butting heads with him really quickly in this game. The Countess in black, she tends to hoard a lot of money, partially because she primarily relies on sheep, and she makes a lot of money that way, and she can be really dangerous if you let her live into the late game. The Bishop is a conniving son of a bitch. If he tries to make an alliance with you, you can almost be assured he'll break it later. He plays pretty defensively, though, building castles and fortifying his territory before moving out. The knight and the baron are both are the two aggressive AI. The knight in red will just pretty much go, 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 kill, 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 attack, attack, attack. Montezuma style, if you're familiar with civilization. The baron, on the other hand, if you piss him off, he'll attack you. And he won't stop until he's done. But that gets us to my county. Suffolk. You can see that we're surrounded by Essex, Cambridgeshire, and Norfolk, all counties that are good to take. But let's look at, uh, before we hop into the county screen, let's just go ahead and start with, let's see here, first off we are in the year, well, let's actually double back here, we're in the year 1268 right now actually. and. I'm sure some of you who've played Crusader Kings can tell you a little bit more what's going on in European history at this time. I believe the premise of this game is that uh, the king's dead, and this is around the era when uh, William of Orge steps up and sort of takes over everything and becomes William the Great or William the whatever. But we don't have that. We have a bunch of nobles here instead. You get to play as one of them, and you can send the messages. One of the fun things about this game is that you can type in messages that you want to. You can say whatever you want. You can say, Knight, you're a butt face, but if you say it in a flattering way, the AI responds as if it's flattering. So, good fun things to know. This button moves your units. We'll get to that. This button lets you share resources with other county. We'll get there. This is the steward button, which you can get reports on your counties. It's kind of like a fast look, which is very important in this game. Uh, this button is for if anyone's forging your land, it'll hop you straight to it, and this one's for designing castles, which we'll get to it later. That's one reason, though, that I do like Lords of the Realm 1 better than 2, is that you can design your own castles. It's nice to have that option available. But here is Suffolk in spring 1268. Nothing too bad happening in the county, and then there's heavy rain, which is pretty bad for crops. You'll see pretty quickly here that you always get an update of any kind of random event that happens in any kind of weather. And right now you see we're on half ration. And my people are unhealthy, which I guess for 1268 is pretty good if my people are just unhealthy. But let's just go ahead and go through a quick tour here. You can see that my people would normally be wanting to eat some grain here, 
but because I have them at half ration, haha, they're living entirely off of dairy products from cattle. Cattle are very important in this game. They uh, supplement your grain, and you gotta really balance them. And you can see here that I have some green fields that I can use to change production however I want. I can add another grain field, cattle or sheep field, or I can keep it follow, which I'm gonna do right now. My first goal is going to be to clear these barren areas and get my farmland back. If I can't get a good economy from, because it is an agricultural economy, at least in the early game, then I'm going to be in trouble. So how do you do that? You can adjust some of the unit placement down here, but you are controlled sort of by the, or not controlled, but you control how your workers work on the fields. You can split them up and down. I can make builders, miners, quarries, foresters, and armors, and we will be doing that later in the game. But for now I'm going to make serfs, because serfs are the people that clear the field. And that's what we need. It takes plenty of turns to do it, but you'll see how that works. This is the merchant screen right now. We have 12 merchants arriving from abroad. There's no merchants going around. They're never on the first turn and they kind of peter in. Here is the military screen, which is going to be very important, hopefully sooner rather than later. And one thing to keep in mind about raising armies in this game, it is very difficult to do it just on your own. Reason being is that A, you can't conscript more than half your population. And B, the closer you get to half your population you're conscripting, the bigger the unhappiness hit you take, and you can take a huge, huge hit. I, I could conscript a bunch of peasants right now and drop myself probably close to zero happiness. So there's a big penalty for you trying to conscript people. That's why you want to get your counties very large. And this last button's kind of your almanac button. You can look at the population growth history, grain report cattle report with dairy production sheep report sheep's another reason i like lords one over lords two even though lords two there's a lot of technical things that are superior about it but one thing that's missing is sheep at least to me and sheep is pretty much primarily an economic resource you can't eat them as food but every spring they produce wool and wool can be sold for crowns which is the end game currency so i believe i've adjusted my people how i want to Let's go ahead and end the turn. Now like other turn-based strategy games, the early turns are going to be really about focusing on what's going on the inside, but first let's look at the Earl with his goatee and funny hat. This is what he has to say. You always get a message from your closest nobleman early on. Welcome, way to fail self. It is a shame we must meet as foes. I trust we shall hold our vows of chivalry. Well, the Earl's always kind of a nice guy. He's Him and the Baron are the two people that I kind of think, I don't really want to kill you, but I'm going to anyway. So we'll see how that goes. For now, let's go back to Suffolk in the Summer of Love 1268. Dull weather, all quiet once again, so we're not getting a lot of random events. And I don't really want to go to normal ration just yet. I'll go one more time. I don't like my happiness dropping so far, but not a lot I can do about that. Okay. That is what I want to see eventually when I'm ready for it. In the early game, how do you get counties if you can't raise troops? You get mercenaries. And you'll have mercenaries randomly appear. If you're in outlying counties, you sometimes have trouble getting them. If you don't hire them soon enough, the AI will hire them, and then you'll be stuck. But Swedish swordsmen you see, and it only pops up briefly, so I'll do it again. 150 swordsmen, and that's enough to take some counties, unless your county's really populated. But obviously we don't have 700 money right now, we only have 82. So our first goal is going to be to get anywhere between 450 to 650 crowns. Because that will get us most of the mercenary packs that will go through. I much prefer standing melee units like swordsmen or like pikemen. I'll work with archers, but that requires me to conscript my own units as well, which I hope to avoid in this game. At least early on. You have to later. So let's see here. Did I actually adjust my farm output. I did enough. I gotta keep serfs on the field or they won't clear it. So we'll go to normal ration next time. Alright, so autumn. What happens in the autumn? Dull weather again, poor for ripening. And let's see here, we're gonna go up to normal ration now because we need it. But you see that dull weather dropped me down from 50 grain before to 46 now. So there's, those are, there's events that can actually hurt it a little, a lot more that I'm sure you'll see, but let's see here. Are we gonna actually reclaim a field? Yes, we are. You don't need that many herders early on. And I'm not exactly sure what the rules are in this game if putting people on this after you reclaim the field is superfluous or if it carries on to the next one. 
I just have them all on there as a course of habit. So we have, and you know, she you gets your merchant report that says Bob the shop is nearby, and you get more merchants coming in. Nothing else to see. So you're gonna see one of these fields pop back up and be normal. Which one? That one. All right. So it's winter, and we get our first merchant. And see, there we go. Very heavy rain is very bad for ripening crops. You can see our report here that actually dropped us down. Those last two events dropped our grain production 20%. So weather can be very significant, especially on hard here. And you can see I lost two people. Was it just death rate or are my people already leaving my county? I have some people leaving for Cambridgeshire already. So they're like, fuck you, way to fail self. We do not want you ruling over us. And I don't entirely blame them. I wouldn't want me ruling them either. So, oh, fuck. I'm sorry. First merchant. And this is some pretty terrible luck. Harry Nail, who looks like a smug piece of crap with... A very disproportionately like his nose is bigger than his eyes and his mouth he has nothing to tell me because he just came in there's two things I want to buy for my first merchant ale because it improves my happiness and sheep so especially if I can get it before the first winter because then I can flip that for wool but he sells neither so we're gonna be sitting on our money so I hope I get another merchant near that comes by soon so let's go ahead and get our herders back up, and we're only going to plant about as much grain as we can reasonably expect to harvest. So we'll use 80 farmers to plant 8 grain, and I should have enough to sustain me through the year. So that's the first year of gameplay, and now we're going to get a report from our steward. There he is. Doesn't he look totally happy with me? <sighs> Alright. I have mixed reports from our sheriffs, my lord. There are certain areas of the economy that you may want to look at. No shit, especially if I can't get sheep going. But peasants, population's up. Health is still unhealthy, which is about the same. Happiness dropped because I had to half feed my people. And look at this. I am in super, super last place. Now these flags, the higher they are, the better you are. And the knight is apparently the best of all. And you can see here we're all tied for castles, but because the baron's on the far left, he wins. I have less money, I have the same number of counties, we all have the same troops. The knight has the most people and the earl has the happiest people. So what's the smug boy cut, squire cut knight going to say? Do you consider yourself a fitting lord? My jester would make a better ruler. How nice of you, you look like the jester. Look at that, look at that bling, he's going to OG himself. <sighs> Grats to you if you know what I'm talking about. Alright, so we are in the next year, 1269, and right now we're just kind of rolling along. I only actually managed to plant 45 that time. We want to actually clear these out in part because that will improve our crop rotation and fertility. And I don't have to replant areas constantly, the AI kind of does it automatically. But for now I'm still just trying to clear fields. I actually didn't plant enough grain, but I only wanted to plant what my people could actually take care of and there we go Moorish archers they cost 700 I don't really want to get that's 250 archers which is significant but they die unless you put a meat shield out in front of them and sometimes it's really hard if you have to take on an army to, you have to fight counties to take them on and if they throw hundreds of people at you those archers can get overwhelmed pretty easily so we'll just keep trying to save up some bank so next turn, new church finishes. So we get some happiness back. We're still unhealthy, but at least we're eating and at least we're clearing another field. And it looks like I'll be able to probably get another moo cow here. Just based on, yeah, there we go. Just based on needing more things. Cows apparently are born in the summer. Sheep tend to be born in the winter going into the spring. Don't know why. <sighs> I haven't lived on a farm though, so maybe someone can explain to me better what that's all about. So another field reclaimed and damage to crops, bad for livestock. So how shitty of a harvest are we about to have? We're down to 33. We're at 46, now we're down to 33. That's, that's way more than a quarter. So we're going to have a terrible harvest and I'm going to need to buy grain from a merchant and or cut my ration, which sucks. Because if I had sheep right now, I could fight that off a little bit. But as it is, I'm not going to have enough grain to get by. <sighs> My people are just starting to get happy. They're just starting to like me. Except for the people that are leaving for Essex. That's like a family of five. And the number of houses in your county, by the way, is proportional to the uh, your population. So let's see if we get a merchant that will 
Oh my god. So storm. So my harvest was even less. Only 24. I lost 50% of my grain in two seasons. Just about. Sucks. And I can't buy ale from you. And for this point of the game, you actually have really expensive grain, which I don't like. But I need the sheep. That's gonna pay for itself. I will buy 12 sheep. And before I forget, because I have forgotten in the past, I'm gonna put make a sheep field that says ba to you too. And now I'm gonna start producing some wool, which is pretty awesome once I put some shepherds up there. Because you see, sheep were born in the winter, and it was just kind of like a buy 12 sheep, get three free deal. Because apparently they are all ready to reproduce. Now we're gonna get some more herds to try and get some more moo calf. But I'm gonna dump a bunch of people into planting as well. Now that's gonna cost me 11 grain, where I barely have enough right now. I don't like paying this price for grain, but I don't really have a choice. I'm just gonna buy 20 and hope that there's no heartbreaking mercenaries come by that I need to buy. So pretty much I just have to make it through these turns. Probably have to drop to half rations once. So let's do it. Yeah, sometimes early game the merchants will get really cheap stuff. So, but see this guy, the steward's a little bit happier with. He says that their sides are good. I get news almost always positive, but urge caution. Population's up. I'm up to mixed health. That sounds like a, a health department report. We're up to mixed health now. That's great. Happiness up. Everything's up. And we're still super last place. The bishop and the countess have actually built castles. I'm not used to seeing the countess build a castle that fast. I'll show you castles here in just a second. So bishop most crowns, bishop most troops, knight most people, are all happiest people. And the bishops, look at that face. That looks like someone who uh, eats well and just leaves his peasants and all the poor folk to not eat at all like a good Christian leader. He says, I foretold of your folly these lands rightfully belong to the church and I will have them. Suck it up, buddy. Now... The Countess in Gloucestershire, the reason you won't have a castle here is normally you take over a county by walking over the town square, the little crossroad area. But once you have a castle, and that is a shitty castle, but you, you can build that super fast. Um, once you have a castle and it's garrisoned, you have to attack that to take the county. Same down here, like I said, the bishop builds castles all the time. His is a lot stronger. That's kind of how it goes. And let's see here, let's actually go ahead and build a castle for ourselves. I was debating doing this later, but might as well do it now. You can build from a prefabricated castle. You see there's a few basic designs. I believe, yeah, the, uh, the bishop actually uses one of the designs that's right there. Early keep. No, we don't want that. I don't want to build that castle. We're going to design our own castle. Now, the castle designer is pretty basic, pretty bare bones. I don't like doing 25 meter walls, though, because that just, it's kind of like the middle one's a, the sweet spot for it. So there's our stats, and you can see as soon as we drop some walls, let's do that now. As soon as we drop some walls, you can see the price go up here. Six stones, 150 man hours. But what I'm actually going to do is go ahead and make a keep. Keeps are very important for plenty of reasons, one of which being, okay, so I didn't apparently make this very symmetrical, but that's okay. Keeps are very important. You don't have to have a keep be your base of operations, but keeps, especially around keeps, are very hard to destroy. And in order to win a siege, you have to destroy your opponent's place. You can also do round or square towers, large or small. Large round towers are the strongest. So that's actually what I'm going to do. Let me go ahead and drop this back down real quick. Large round tower again. And let's see if we can... No, that's not what we're going to do. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make something super creative. You can get you can get a little interesting with this, but the reason I'm making something bare bones ish is that I actually want something that I can complete in a reasonable time frame. So we're gonna have four basic towers. And then we're gonna put a medium gate not a small gatehouse, we're gonna put a medium gatehouse in the middle. Just like so. And this castle is going to be a little more expensive than maybe other castles, but we're going to have plenty of supplies in here. Just pack these up, and just to top it all off, we'll have 
the d very design flawed interior moat. And all moats don't cost anything, they just increase man hours or production. So there we go. There is our little castle that I'm just about to incorrectly mouse over. There we go. And you can get some different views of it. That's what it looks like standing up in the game. Here's your distance view of it. Pretty neat stuff. You can rotate that too. So just a basic symmetrical castle. But yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and exit the builder. This will take 38 stone, 22 wood. It's going to be a long-term project. We're going to go ahead and build this. Instead of naming it More Greg, which is one of the default names, <sighs> we're just going to name this. I mean, there's all kinds of names. We could name it, but I don't want to sit here too long. We'll just call this Fail Keep. Simple, effective, and that icon means it's actually a large style castle, believe it or not. I try to keep it modest. I used to make build castles that filled the entire screen that I wouldn't complete until the beginning or the end of the game. So there you go. Tiny castles are that kind of icon. Medium castles, that kind of icon. And then large over ambitious castles are like that. Apparently having a keep and having moats are too much to ask. So here we go. Damage to crops, bad for livestock. You're damn right it is. But we do have 116 grain, so we may be able to squeeze it out. Irish Spearmen, oh, oh fuck. Those are my favorite mercenaries because they're cheap and you get 400 of them. And I don't have anywhere near the money for it. So maybe I'll be able to hit them next time. But at least I do know they pass through my area because mercenaries like merchants kind of have set paths that they go through, at least is my experience with this game. So, at least I have a shot at them if I can hire them before one of my opponents does, but we're still focusing on developing our land. So, did I get everything I needed to, other than crying about the mercenaries? Yeah. Now, I could go ahead and fortify that castle, but I have no intentions of building it for a good while. So, there he goes. Oh, fuck. Cattle disease. Everything is just a big oh fuck with this game right now. Alright, so we're at half ration... For the summer this won't last too long i'd love to get a merchant to come through here but it doesn't look like we're going to and you can see where it says builders needed or materials needed we're not going to be getting any materials for quite some time but we are going to free up another thing or excuse me another field feels like we're overdue for that so i'm going to take a happiness hit for having to go to half rations but hopefully if things hold out which is a pretty big if Especially when we keep getting cow disease and losing cattle, which means that we're losing our dairy production. I think we have just lost, and I don't think our cattle report, yeah, our cattle report is not, okay, we have had three deaths and three deaths twice in a row for these cows. So that sucks, but cows will come back. That's, that's some really terrible luck, though, because we need, we need those cows to stay alive, and we need them to reproduce quite a bit. So we're down from something to 97 grain, but hopefully, hopefully I will be able to get a good merchant who will actually buy stuff from me, because I want to get money together. And the Countess, look, she's already completed Glamis Castle. There's your happy little cutscene. And let's look at the finished product as soon as we get there. So yay, there's the Countess, there's her tiny castle, which can hold 80 men and has room for 170 food. The reason you build a tiny castle like that is so that you can maybe bring an army just in the nick of time to besiege it, or break the siege, but to be honest, I could probably siege and kill that castle in two turns. So look, heavy rain, even worse for already ripening crops, we only got 84, so we lost about 20% of our harvest. But we may be able to make it, and we get Fat Barry. Fat Barry's my dog, I guess, because what does he know? News from Cambridgeshire: the people complain of little, the people complain little of ill health. That's exciting, because that means Cambridgeshire is going to be really tough to take if the people are super healthy all the time. So, do we have any mercenaries in place? No. I could buy some more grain. Let's go ahead and sell our wool first. Which I do want to go and take this point to mention that yes, I do get 375 crowns, so that puts me at one of my early game goals. And I probably, it's probably in my best interest to go through and go ahead and buy some more grain. His grain prices are a little pricey too. Let's see if we can get some happiness. 
Yeah, let's just spend one there. I'd rather spend 64 more crowns on getting some more grain. So yeah, 25 sacks. That should get us through the year, barring other problems, which usually crop up. <sighs> These prices are dynamic, though, and that's something that really impresses me, especially from where this air is from. The more people buy grain, and that's me and the AI, the further those prices will go up. AI tends to sell livestock later on. That makes those prices crash. But the most important thing is the wool price. If you get wool early in the game, you can get some great bank for it, but eventually the AI nobles, especially the countess, especially the earl, and to a lesser extent the bishop, will start selling wool to the point where they crash the market. So by the end of this game, what was selling for 25 crowns could be selling for just one or two. So something to look out for. It's another feature I really like in this game. But let's see, we're in the winter. We haven't figured out how much we're selling yet. But we are getting four sheep, which is pretty awesome, because that's even more wool. So let's see, we want to keep ahead of our growth curve here, which apparently our population didn't change at all. I think 150 is a good goal. 150 farmers. Let's sow 15 grain in there. And that should keep us for the next year. Because you don't want to sow so much that you can't actually harvest it. And I really need to turn off these steward reports. Let's see what the bishop says. The church seeks strong allies in these troubled times. You can stay in Cornwall. Get the way from me, bishop. Like I said, the alliance system in this game is not terribly uh, robust. Other than, hey, you might not attack me, but the bishop, he will stab you in the back. So, news is good, but he urges caution. The bishop is the greatest noble, and I'm actually catching up with the baron. I'm actually catching up. The knight is definitely no longer the greatest noble. And I, that's, hey look, I build a castle. I have the most castles, yay! And I actually have more money than some people. Um, yeah. So the bishop is still all smug and shit. Let's see, maybe I can catch some good mercenaries and get in on the inevitable land grab. Nope. But I do have 18 wool to sell, so that's going to put me over the top if I can hit that mark in time. For now, though, our goal is still to go ahead and reclaim fields, and we're going to reclaim another one here, and hopefully I can get 159 grain to stay with me. That would be awesome. But yeah, let's go ahead and end this turn. I just kind of want to see if I can get maybe something. Okay, we're starting to get other units marching out here, so this is probably a good turn to end it on because everyone's going to start moving, and you can right-click to follow along with what the AI is doing. And later on in the game, there's going to be a lot of what the AI is doing. So let's just take a quick look at our county. See, there we go. Loss of grain stores. So I have to do what? Jump back to half rations. Anytime there's rats, it's a flat 25%. It doesn't matter if you have 1,000 grain or 10 grain. It sucks. And Flemish crossbowmen. <sighs> not the kind of mercenaries I want right now because I can't afford to conscript a hundred people to be a meat shield for them with no guarantee of winning. If I had some weapons, maybe, but just not the people I want. Actually, with 624, I can barely afford them. So, yeah, we'll just go ahead and make sure our farming's all good. It looks like it is. Let's make sure it is. We don't need that many herders right now. So let's see if we can reclaim other fields pretty soon. But yeah, that's Lords of the Realm. We are going to continue this next time from uh, our county to see if we can possibly expand into the rest of England as I turn off the steward report from every four years. So yeah, this is Way to Fail. Thank you for voting and making this the Viewer's Choice series, and I look forward to bringing you more of this classic game. Till next time.